Hi, I'm Hayley Victoria and welcome back to my Grammar Policing channel. In today's session, we're continuing our investigations up the assault ladder. We've done common assault, battery, ABH, GBH, aggravated GBH, and now we're looking at a fray. A fray is section three of the Public Order Act 1986. And this one is super interesting because we start looking at a hypothetical third person out of the scene. Well, I'm not saying you have to see ghosts and things like that. We are looking at whether or not anybody else who would be present or could be present with a reasonable firmness. So, you know, who's who's not, you know, jump scared or really tough and not scared of anything. Someone who's got reasonable firmness would be put into some kind of fear at that scene. So hmm, let's go through this step by step as usual. For Section 3 of the Public Order Act 1986, the threat of violence needs to be real for other people and to reasonably be expected to upset other people that could be at the scene. So the primary objective of this piece of law is to protect other people at the scene from that affray. And like I said, that's when this hypothetical third person comes in. So you're like, hmm, would a, a person of reasonable firmness be put into fear or distress by what's happening right now? So I'm going to read the legislation straight from Blackstone's policing book. because I like to get it word perfect for you guys studying at home. So there are three parties that need to be involved for it to be in a fray. That's the person who's committing the threat, who's threatening somebody, who's committing that offence, the person who's being targeted, they have to be at the scene, and at least one bystander. So I'm doing the brownie guide thing. So this is a legislation straight from Blackstone's policing book. I've got a book in my hands, look. Ooh. A person commits a fray if they use or threaten unlawful violence towards another and their conduct is such it would cause a person of reasonable firmness present at the scene to fear for his or her personal safety. Okay, so I'm going to break that down bit by bit as usual. So a person commits a fray. So if there are two or more people there, it's the conduct of them taken together that you consider. Uses or threatens unlawful violence. In terms of a fray, the threat can't be words alone. So you know we looked at common assault, Words alone could cons constitute as an offence. It can't hear. Uh, they must intend to use or threaten violence or be aware that their conduct may be violent or threaten violence. Okay? Um, towards another. And so a person who's threatened or subject to violence has to be physically present. Okay? The, the hypothetical person can't be the person you're threatening. You can't just like shouting into the wind. The wind is not scared of you, okay? Um, the, the use of threat and violence must be directed towards a person and not a property. That shed doesn't care if you're going to hit it. Okay. Their conduct is such as would cause a person of reasonable firmness present at the scene. So at least one bystander must be at the scene. The remote possibility of a bystander arriving at the scene to witness the conduct is insufficient. However, no person of reasonable firmness need actually be or likely to be present at the scene. So, you know, I mentioned that hypothetical third person earlier. They don't actually have to be there, but a bystander does. OK, at least one bystander must be present at the scene. The remote possibility of a bystander arriving at the scene to witness the conduct is insufficient. It doesn't matter <laughs> if, the per if the bystander is scared or not, if a person of reasonable firmness would be, is what I'm trying to say. So to fear for their personal safety. Let's see, here we go. The bystander does not need to fear their own personal safety. For example, a police officer in full riot gear is not going to be bothered about Kev from Burley kicking off or whatever. He's not bothered, right? Because they're trained to deal with people like that. The court will gauge what is unacceptable conduct by considering whether a hypothetical person of reasonable firmness would fear for their safety. This event is tried either way. Now that means it could go to the magistrate's court or it could go to Crown Court, depending on the severity of the offence. We've covered that to death, right? If it's tried summarily, you might look at six months in prison and or a fine. If you go um, to the Crown Court, so if you're on indictment, you're looking at three years in prison. Basically, don't kick off and act like a knob, okay? So let's just recap that because I don't want to be confusing people. A fray is section three of the Public Order Act 1986. And a fray is a step up, that step up from GBH. So we've gone all the way from common assault, battery, ABH, GBH, aggravated GBH. Now we're at a fray, which is section three. There's only two more left. Okay, so now we're at section three. And as I mentioned, there are three people 
involve three parties at this scene. You've got the person or people making the threats. The person that the threat is being aimed at has to be a person, can't be a building or the wind and the bystander. Now then, there has to be a consideration for this hypothetical third person, like oh, fourth person, somebody in the ether that could be affected by this violence. It, so it doesn't have to be that the bystander or the target is afraid by those actions or disturbed or upset by them. What it does matter though, is that a person of reasonable firmness would be, okay? And like I mentioned, an example there would be a police officer in the full gear is not gonna be bothered about you kicking off. But I might be if I'm walking down the street with my little girl or um, I don't know, any other person. The man on the Clapham omnibus is what people always say. A regular person, would they be distressed and upset by the behaviour that you are doing, the conduct that you have got? If the answer is yes, you've committed a fray. Okay? I hope that makes sense. That's very whistle stop. But that is a fray. Section 3 of the Public Order Act 1986. Thank you for watching. Please let me know anything else you'd like me to cover in the comments. I'm going to be running two streams of video, so we're going to have the law and we're going to have the crime as well because i've got different units coming in at work and i want to make sure i'm covering different aspects i'm going to start focusing on forensic psychology a lot more in my actual day job so we're going to get lots more of that kind of stuff coming too please let me know anything else you'd like me to cover like i said drop me a comment i love getting your messages and things like that and yeah thanks very much see you soon look after each other stay safe and please don't commit any crimes